Ciao, everyone. This is Esther. Alfred here. Of you, me, and Cicely. I don't know what's going on with him already. We're already having fun. We're two expats living in Sicily, and we come to you every week to talk about all things Sicilian. And we also travel around Sicily and bring you videos. And so excited that we are also starting our tours. Right, Al? 99 degrees here today. How happy can I possibly be? <laughs> 32 degrees Celsius. 90. What was it, 93 degrees 93. Before, right? In Palermo, it's hitting 100. Yeah? It's the, been crazy hot in Palermo. The pigeons aren't even flying. They're like walking and hitchhiking. That's and it's hot and hazy, and Etna is erupting again. Yeah. So here we go. So the big exciting news of the week is as of June 21st, Italy is open to Americans without having to quarantine. You will have to, however, show one of three things, either that you got vaccinated, but one of the European uh, ministers association, uh, associations uh, preferred vaccines. Those are Pfizer, Moderna, um, and I believe AstraZeneca is on there, but I have to check on that. But for sure, Pfizer, Moderna are on that list. Or you're going to have to uh, show a negative test for COVID. So it's a good time. Or a rapid test. So very exciting. Already I saw some people uh, arriving in uh, Rome. Uh, so it's nice to see that we have some um, activity back here in Sicily. In fact, one of our uh, clients will be landing in Palermo tomorrow. So I'm very excited that we're going to be starting the tours. And welcome back, Americans, Canadians, and everyone else who's been waiting to come back to Sicily. It's still not that good, though. No matter what she says, it's still not that good. I didn't so say why was, don't you just jump I, on a plane? I didn't say it was good, come, honey. And come here. I didn't say it was good, honey. I said it's open. It's hot. It, and you still, well, starting on June 28th, no more masks, but indoors you do. So what's not good about this? You this know is what great I'll tell you. What are you today? talking well, about? Why is it not good? I'll tell you how to cancel a bunch of flights go flying from the United States to Italy in August. You know why? Tell them why, Esther. I don't know, honey. That's, there was that's nobody a, on the plane, no, right? There was nobody on the plane, so they had to consolidate. Yeah. I mean, well, who knows? Who you know, knows? Usually, what? Feta Gusto for August, August the fifteenth. That's the big holiday around it's here. It's going to be busy. You here, can't I think. get a plane, right? You said it's not good. Why is it not good? I don't think. I think. I think it's going to be a soft. I think it's going to be, be soft. soft. It's going to be course. soft until September. I think everybody right now, just my opinion, is now, wary. They're putting their little. A little toe in the water. But L, the point right, is, the point is that it is now allowed to come here because before you had to take one of those COVID-free flights, so yeah. they were very limited. I guess. So this guess is where we're, we're in the point. step in the right direction, right? And you know, the other thing with the mask that starting on June 28th, you don't have to wear a mask outdoors. Slowly but surely, we're getting there. Isn't there, there. like some qualifiers on that mask thing? Like if you're in if a you're big indoors, crowd, Yes, if you're indoors, indoors yeah. you have to. Also still, you know, only six people uh, at a table in restaurants. And if you're at a big fair or a big event where there's crowding or if you're standing in lines, you still have to wear a mask. I, I don't know about you, but personally, I'm gonna continue wearing a mask for a while. I'm going to continue on wearing a mask too, except when I go to bed at nighttime. Do I have to keep on wearing one? <laughs> <laughs> that makes me wear a mask. It's crazy. It but so funny, well. it's not. It's not a mask like you know for COVID. She likes to make a mask like the Lone Ranger. Usually, it's the Lone Ranger mask. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The other big thing that we want to oh, announce, Esther, of course, Esther, is Esther, that Esther, Esther, uh, we have our October tour, and we're going to be doing some private tours in September, and we're free for November, and we have our Christmas tour, which, by the way, is on our website, youmeetandsicily.com. Uh, <laughs> what's the matter? Go ahead, Al. <laughs> Here's what I was going to say today. I was, I was reading an article today on LaCecilia.it about ASP. Again, you know, ASP. What's ASP? They don't know what ASP is. That's the scientific association in charge of COVID containment, so to speak. Well, they're always around. Though, they're always ASP. around. They're all over the place. But you right know, now they're focused there, right? on. And they had a little bit of problem because that was the organization that fudged the numbers. When was that? Back in February? And the guy in charge of it, he fudged the numbers, and the guy in charge of it got... Well, there were a bunch of them that fudged right, the numbers. There was a bunch of numbers getting fried, so he, he got canned, although he was actually let put him back, him back in, right? in. So today, I'm, I'm thinking about it, right? And those are good-paying jobs, by the way. They're not crummy jobs, right? 
Today, two more doctors in Ragusa got arrested. One was a psychiatrist. Well, you know, we have the medical system over here in Sicily, so if you have to go to a doctor, you don't have to pay, okay? So this fellow was, you know, people were coming into him, and he says, oh, no, you have to go and see me privately. So he was sending the people who shouldn't ah. have to pay any money, Hester. And he was charging them privately. Yeah, fraud, fraud, fraud. It seems to me that the fiscal police and Tracking the Cayabin area, they are arresting them by the boat yeah, load they're for working corruption hard. right now. It's Lots crazy. of that going on. Good, I'm glad, I'm glad. Uh, the other big thing is that the G20, you know what the G20 is, right? Yeah. There's the G7 and then G20 with 19 of the most uh, powerful countries uh, in the European Union. They're having, they had the education ministers here in Catania, in downtown Catania yesterday, and today the work ministers were meeting. So uh, I was talking to our bus company the other day because I'm waiting on some quotes, and she's like, we are crazy busy. We have people from all over the world coming here, and all their buses are booked. So that was kind of good to hear that one of our vendors is getting busy again. And I'm sure that's really good for downtown Catania. In fact, the mayor of Catania, Juliese, said the other day, this is great to restart the economy uh, for Catania. It's, you know, the, G7, uh, the G20 will be held in other locations in Italy, but good for Sicily for getting two dates. Um, I think it's good. You know why I think it's good? Because what? Catania has to save face. So I know that they've been doing a ton of cleanup Clean up. down there. <laughs> right? Who's going to benefit from that? But the citizens. They're doing a ton of getting rid of the bummy people down there. Okay. Remember at, at the G7, I think we it was 2017, they had the G7, all the major leaders, including the president of the United States over in Tarmina, and they were making visits in Catania. And I remember the weekend before, right, we had press passes and we were um, up there in Tarmina uh, covering this. Yeah. And that was such a cool experience. Um, and they and we were downtown Catania and we're like, oh my God, they really cleaned up and they took uh, a bunch of the you know, the people that were begging off the streets. So I'm sure the same thing happened here for the G20. The one thing that I noticed about the G7 when we went, because that's where all the, like, the heads top. of state were here, right? Am I correct? No, Secretary. the president. We're oh, talking yeah, the prime ministers. Right. The, but yeah. Catania, for the first time, I saw a lot of women on the street corners soliciting men i had never you don't see that really? too much yeah I don't, you don't well you see, see them on the street on the side no, streets you know they, they must have brought in some women from i don't know where knows? but there was a lot of women that were non-italians and non sicilians right around the duomo district as i remember i remember commenting it uh, to you too so you know the other big thing well it's not a big thing it happens every year is uh the festival of san giovanni battista is happening on june 24th and by tomorrow, the way yeah. we did a whole video on that and i'll leave you a link and maybe alfred said if i behave he'll come down there with me to achitreza and maybe we can do a little bit of filming every it's been time a while we've been to a festival when was the last festival we went to it's been a while I don't remember it's been a while. But I love going to festivals. You know, when, when when you tell me about San Giovanni Baptista, St. John the Baptist, I always think about Giardini Noxus because he's the patron saint of Giardini Noxus. And, and Achitrazza and many and other, Achitrazza, many I mean, communities. He's one of the most prominent saints. Sicilian saints in Sicily, right? But my friend Roberto up in Sicilia Cafe, I used to, right, this time usually in past years, I would usually be up there helping him around, schmoozing with the people up there. <laughs> And that place used to go bananas. On June 24th? Wow. Fireworks and the fireworks, the parades, everything else, and quite a few other places uh, are like that too, West. So it's a huge, huge, huge uh, holiday here. And I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, at this point in time, I'm hoping that people, some people start making some money. That's okay? what I'm hoping. I mean, they have to, they, they need to start making some money and they have to, you know, prime the pump, so to speak, to get ready. And that's, you know, because it's still only June. It's only June 23rd today. So I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, little by little, we stand up on our feet here. Before I take some comments, a big, big, big announcement for our friends of Yumi and Sicily. Guess whose birthday is this weekend? Guess whose big birthday is this weekend? Saturday the 26th. That'll be fun, huh? Uh, Too many. 
Buongiorno, Jody Delivka is here. John Lepari is here from Florida. Uh, Joe Manila, buongiorno, Joe. A beautiful, clear, and sunny day in New Jersey. Jersey. Kathy says buongiorno from Andover. Kathy Henderson's from Andover. Yeah, Joe Scapelletti. I do not envy God's paradise because I am so satisfied to live in Sicily. Federico II, King of Sicily, Emperor of the Roman Empire. Good comment. Do you know that uh, he was uh, Frederick II and ended up getting excommunicated by the by the by, king, by yeah, the pope, by the pope, by the pope. Yeah. yeah. Well, there was this struggle of power, oh, right? Yeah, because with the kingdom of the two Sicilies. We and need Naples to be talking about. We we should talk At about the Normans time, soon. He was a, he was a character that guy, uh, Frederick II, wasn't he? Yeah. He was well, a he character. Well, he expected to be king, and the pope didn't like that that type of a power struggle, so he got excommunicated. Yeah, but that was a great period here in Sicily, very much a time of flourishment in every single way. But we'll talk about this in a little bit. Um, speaking, Gioia Russo, buongiorno. Oh, the other big thing, you guys, Italian classes starting this week, Italian classes, conversation, Italian classes. Uh, email me, message me, I'll leave you a link. It's just really easy, 30 minutes. We'll have some live, some pre-recorded. It's really a chance for you to uh, get a chance to talk and better your vocabulary. But I, I know Jody has been um, taking some lessons. And September uh, the thirteenth, yeah. Jody's arriving on September, September the thirteenth. Yeah, right. That's great. Mini Palazzo, Washington State. Connie is here. Buongiorno, Connie, and from Minnesota, Minnesota, where it is a beautiful, cool day. Good. Oh, Jim Ingram is here. James, happy to see Jim Missed Ingram. You. Okay. Um, I want to yeah. tell a story. Yes, tell that story. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> it's a good story. You know, every once in a while, not too often, but every once in a while, something gets to me and kind of tugs on my heart. But earlier this afternoon, as we were sitting down for our lunch, which, by the way, I want to talk about the lunch here, she made me for the first time. <laughs> Is it called? Sicilian cold pasta. Cold pasta salad. salad. Because it's so hot. I didn't want her to cook because it's so it's so it's, ching ching honey. it's so hot, right? So anyways, the phone rang and it said international call. Usually when it says international call, it's someone from Russia. Okay, but this one had Canada on it or something, right? So I picked up the phone and this fellow this fellow talked to me. He goes, Mr. Zappala, he says, I've been trying to get to you for several days, and probably he has. He says, listen, I want to make a donation to you, me, and Sicily, and I also want to make a donation to the Sicilian Project. So I said to him, wow, I says, that's, you know, that's very generous to you. Why? He says, well, I, he says, I stumbled across your stuff, and now I watch all your, your videos. I listen to your chat, this and that from Toronto, Canada, right? Which is really good to, that he called, but the thing that got to my heart is Mr. Tony Fusco, that's his name, Tony Fusco. He was married in uh, Termini, in SA, to in a Sicilian gal, yeah. gal. He's 87 yeah. years old. God bless him. And God he's bless him. fighting with his computer to figure out how to how make to a donation to the Sicilian Project, and also to the GoFundMe. He does for, comment on a, a lot of our stuff, but what I'll tell a you nice what, what thing. a nice guy. It was nice. And he was telling me about what a large population of Italians are in Toronto, which I knew. Yeah, yeah. Which I knew. We've gotten a God lot. Bless him, God bless him. 87 years old. That's just. You know, it makes me, it like, I have chills just thinking yeah, how many people I got, watch our videos and are affected by them. So thank you for you guys for watching our videos and hopefully you're enjoying them because it really is a pleasure for us to come here. We had, uh, I know Joe Renda. Our yes. Pal, our pal Joe Renda. He's from Fitchburg, Massachusetts. Uh, he came on one of our tours and he also sponsored a video in Mistretta. Okay, mm -hmm. his ancestral village. But his mom, I believe it was his mother, right? Yeah. He was in the nursing home. And he would go over there, I think every week, whatever, with his uh, tablet. His tablet. And they would watch uh, You, Me, and Sicily And they would watch You, Me, together. and Sicily together. Oh, it was together. so beautiful. Am I correct in saying yeah, that? Yeah, that's it beautiful. It just blows me away. Where, you know, this is really what motivates me, yeah. I mean, honestly, to give, to give people who probably will never get an opportunity to come here. 
Do you know this is one of the because of age or infirmary to give them a glimpse of our life here, or and if they can't system. afford it, or, or if, if they, they can't, can't afford, afford it. it. Right. I would venture to say this is one of, if the most rewarding jobs I've ever had in my life. And that's all I'll say about that. Kira says that would be a great topic, the kingdom of two Sicilies. Yeah. Hey, I saw Esther from Shefalu who just called me. I'll call you back. <laughs> Ciao from Shefalu as well. <laughs> Can't wait to go to Shefalu. I, I tell you, I miss her so much. I know. Esther, I miss you. This We're is the see other her. Esther. This right. is the other Esther. She is a licensed guide out of uh, Campo Felice de Rochella, out of Cefalu, but she travels all over Sicily. I mean, talk about a knowledgeable person about not just one area, about anything. Anytime there's a topic that I need to discuss with her, talk about her, call her up, boom, 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 boom. Now remember, she was classically trained. You know, you have to go to school, you have to get a license for that. So she's a great asset. Now she is, uh, she's, you know, However beautiful she is on the outside, and believe me, she's a hot tamale. She's, a, <laughs> she's another Hungarian from Budapest, right? Well, she the interesting thing, she's wait a second. She's more beautiful on the inside. Excuse me, she's half Sicilian, half Hungarian. Oh, that's right. She's half and half. That's right. She's half and half. How funny Anyways, is that? Anyways, Dad, I'm looking forward to seeing you, honey. Uh, happy birthday, Al. I was once your age. It was a good year. <laughs> uh, Al, you were once mine? What does that mean? Uh, it's the power of media to do some good in the world. That's what your videos mean. Oh, thank you, Thank Helen. you, Helen. I appreciate that. I think Helen put up a recipe today for your pasta salad. I got so many recipes today for pasta. I didn't know the pasta salad could be made so many ways. Oh, my God. Big Al birthday from Kia. Everyone is saying happy yep. birthday to you. I was born on the day Costa had his last stand. <laughs> and also the day that the North Koreans invaded the Crossed the 38th parallel, started the uh, Korean War. Uh, Harry Truman, when I was when I was born, Harry S. Truman was the president. I was born in 1950. You know Harry Truman? The buck stops. <laughs> the buck stops here. I was Harry born Truman, on D-Day. Yeah. We were both born on that. 52 uh, is when is when he was he was after uh, I think yeah it was after uh, Roosevelt died. He became president, and then he beat uh, somebody. I think it was Al Smith on re-election. And then in 52, Dwight Eisenhower became president. Mm -hmm. So in, the, in those days, Italy was on its knees post-World post War II. The Constitution had just been adopted in 48, uh, and it was dirt poor in Sicily. And people were, again, the second wave, so to speak, started again into the United States yeah. from people uh, uh, who basically fled Italy, I guess you could say, for hopes of a better life in the United States, which, you know, the rest is history, so to speak. Michael and Linda Blaze are here now. Hi, Michael. So Thank Michael you. and Linda, uh, they put up a picture of us. That was our last tour, March 2020, uh, before literally all help broke loose, and they were our last tour, and then we got into the shutdown. Michael, Michael and Michael Linda, Linda Blaze, and they put up, and Linda put up as her one of her pictures, a picture of the four of us at the vineyard, and we are so excited to see you guys later in November. So they excited. Got, that was right when the country was in the process of getting closed down. Exactly. Right as they were all for how long? They, I think they two days got, before. I think they got stuck here. I'm very close to get stuck. Very close. It was, it was, they got out. They got out. The one big thing about, you know, people talking about this new Delta variant and stuff coming around, this and that, in the fall maybe or the winter. I'm not afraid. Yeah, me neither. It was the fear of the unknown last March. I didn't know whether well, this thing was going to be like the plague. Yeah. I mean, people were dropping like flies all right, let's everywhere. Move on. No, no, no. So now everybody's going to be inoculated or a good portion, a good portion of the people. But we understand that there's a lot of people who don't want to. Yeah. And that's why I think that, um, you know, the whole green uh, passport is very fair because it's not only requiring you to have vaccination. You can also have a negative test um, and also show an antibody. Esther, Chefalu, I want to know if you are seeing some uh, tourists over there in Chefalu area. And by the way, Esther Chefalu, I ran into more Hungarians here in Achitraza. Us Hungarians were everywhere. It's hilarious. Uh, Nancy Maranto says, Buonasera, you too. I see the green certificate is user-friendly from those in Italy. Yeah. Only those with health card there can register and get a gift cert scan. No. No. 
No, Nancy, so I talked about this for the first three minutes. Um, as of June 21st, you can come from the United States of America by showing one of three things, either vaccination, uh, COVID um, negative tests, uh, or antibodies. But by the way, before I forget, there is a passenger tracker PDF that you have to print out and sign and, and fill out before you come. That's a passenger uh, tracker. And I, I posted about that a little bit about they'll news, that. They'll give that news from the, yeah. Sicily and Italy, but I'll also put a link here. So things are changing daily, you know, because at first it was that you had to be quarantined until July 30th and that quarantine 10 days for yeah, Americans that, and that, others, that's, that's that changed. Thing. Yeah, that, that's the big thing. Then Maria, I, happy, happy, happy to see you. My, that's my Revere Hardy right there, isn't oh, it? Did you she see what she wrote about the heat? What's that going to do? What was Aquanet? Is that what it was, <laughs> Maria? Aquanet, that's what the Revere girls used to use, Aquanet. Do they still make that stuff? I'm sure they make Aquanet. Aquanet? That yeah. stuff. Child from Wisconsin at 52 and moving to Florence in October to attend hey. an Italian. Very exciting. Oh, 52. You know, you know, that's, the wisdom of Abraham. That's, when you're over 50, you have the wisdom of Abraham. You know, that's one of the things. You know, we you can do some of these lessons online and watch videos and so forth. But until you are in a place and you submerge yourself into the everyday life and you leave the house and only use Italian and don't try to speak English, that's when the real magic comes. And, that, and I encourage all of our travelers when they come here, go practice your Italian. Go try order. So make sure you bring a good camera. All right. Most I mean, people have good iPhone cameras right now. Or, okay. or well, high -tech. I, I think particularly this year. Okay. I think you should bring a good camera and, and take good video and figure out how to use it. Okay. I think that's very important that you capture your own memories. I think the memories that you capture, uh, you can play yeah. play on, right? Over. I've seen and we've had a lot of our, our um, guests and clients and friends who have come here with us and they, years after they've been here, they still post some of those pictures because yeah. the memories are so, so special here in Sicily. The memories that you'll create here uh, are just spectacular. Happy birthday, crying? Al. I've ordered something special for you, Alfred. I hope it here in time before the holiday. Thank you, Fred. All right, and this is okay. Much. Esther, lots of tourists return, mostly Italian, slowly some Europeans, French, Belgian, Spanish, um, and heard here as well some Hungarian. We can't get away from those Hungarians. All right, so let's talk about a French, little bit. French, that's good that the French are coming. So the title, by the way, of the show too is "Best Times to Come." So I'm gonna I'm gonna talk Ooh. about best times to come here in Sicily, and I want to talk about the two best periods. But really, in my opinion, every month is great to come here in Sicily. I would say May, June, when? May, June, that period of May, June, and that period of September, October. Those are the highlight months. But, you know, March is great. April is great. August, a little bit too hot. October is great, right? November is great. And Christmas is something spectacular. So that's all I have to say about that. I think that it's it depends on what the individual traveler is looking for. Okay, mm -hmm. I mean, if if outdoor sports are for you, okay, besides swimming and paragliding and even horseback riding, there's two golfing, right, there's, there's tennis, there's two. Uh, I was going to say San Giovanni La Punta in Belverde. There are two riding academies right here in the Madones on the other side. There's plenty of horseback riding if that's what you like. Uh, if you like other as sports, as she just hiking. mentioned, hiking, Mount Etna, of course, right now they still have hiking, but and they're in the safer areas. Other people, though, they don't like that. They come here for the cultural stuff. They want to see plays. They want to go to museums. They want to do art, uh, stuff like that. There's something here. I think that there's something here for everything. For, for everyone. Right. For me, if I'm into the cultural component, which I've always been I always go off season, okay? In Rome, for example, I used to go, and I still do, November or early December when there aren't any people, 
yet everything is still open and I can just yeah. walk right in. Okay. And the most important thing you is mean that the, you mean museums? A lot you, you mean museums and things. What? But you yeah. know, when museums. when you think about weather too, Al, you know, there's periods, you know, for instance in January it can get a little bit Cold. I mean, we, it doesn't snow here, but uh, also the days are shorter. January, February, the days are shorter. So those are some things that I consider uh, when thinking about this. But you're right. I mean, when when I talk about uh, May and June and September and October, those are the height of tourist season here in Sicily. But also, and, and why didn't I mention July and August? First of all, August is Ferragosto. It is a zoo here. A lot of Italians from up north come here. Um, yeah. It's two weeks of vacation. A lot of things are closed. But it can get really, really stifling hot. And it's very difficult for a lot of people to bear that. Correct. But on the other side of the story, Milan in the Milan in the wintertime is no cup of tea. You have the Alps right, right. here. It's cold as hell. Yeah. A lot of those big cities up in the northern part of Italy, they're cold. Okay. We don't get snow here. I mean, yeah, there is a Edna, little bit of snow the in Edna Mount, and the Brody's. And the Madonia. But notwithstanding the high elevation plate, and it, it's not that they get three feet of snow either, but okay, they point. get enough snow where they get covered. It's more of a, uh, because the temperature average is 50 to 55 or 45 to 55 in January and February. You could have to have rain, okay? So... Uh, although we had never had any problems when we've had our, uh, are we going to do one this year? The Carnivale tour? I know Jody came on the Carnivale tour, the uh, Mardi Gras tour, which was I think in March or something. That's a good time. February, to just go, March. Yeah. February, March. That's it's just still, a good time to go. It's not that cold and, and the, the season is starting to. Um, the other thing to think about too is the festivals. You know, there's a lot of festivals all year round. But because every town has a patron saint and there's a festival in every town. But usually, Alfred, the spring and fall are when the sagras. The sagras, by the way, are celebrations of food. Um, there's the sagra yeah. of Pesce Spada. There's the sagra of uh, the sardine. When is the sa sardine sagra happening in Valverde? Uh, July, July, July. July, that's coming up. we got to go do that. Okay. Celebration of anchovies. So there's a, there's the pistachio sagra. So that's another uh, really important thing that I think you should consider when coming here. There's some kind of festival or, or celebrations because that is something so unique. I've never seen celebrations, not only religious, but other type of celebrations as I've seen here. Well, we're going to be going to the vineyards pretty so, uh, shortly too. I mean, right now, of course, the uh, grapes are not ready to be picked. All right, they won't be ready to be picked until after the summer is over. But they all seem to be open right now doing vineyard tours. Am I correct in yes. saying that? They're all, I, was just saw, I just saw our, our friends at Terra, Terra Constantino, Constantino put a yeah. big big thing up. I That's know our friend exciting. Mike Watt and the people from our, our friends from Sigonella, they go, they go on the Lingua to, Glossa to uh, Gambino. Gambino Vini. There's a lot yeah, of Lucky Pinti. There's a lot of them around here. And they're the you know, the wines in Sicily are getting more and more and more popular worldwide. Worldwide. It's like it's like, you know, people are just discovering Sicily. But they are, so that's a good thing. Mizio from New Jersey. Ciao. Uh, Jody DeLuca, that golf course, you are going to be so excited. Uh, Helen, is the golf course open year-round? This one, I believe, is. Wait a minute, Jody. There's one closer to you than this one over here. Donna Fugata. Yeah, Donna Fugata is, uh, is the one that you want to go to. That's maybe less than an hour away. Okay, that's not that. The one up here is a good hike from Nodo. You're just staying in Nodo, right? She's um, you know, Avala, Avala, Avala. Avala. Yeah, it's still a good hike. Yeah, uh, uh, but they have the a, they closer. have a hotel, Jody. They have a hotel and a restaurant on the property. Um, did your apartment have heat, or did you have to put in yourself? A lot of apartment rents say that they have no heat. What type of heating system did you get, and how much are they? <clears throat> okay, I have um, forced hot water through radiators. Okay, and they sell these units. Where you get them from the gas company, it was about twelve hundred euro to have it put in. But they promised the ones that I got. The one that I got said that you'll get your money back in three years on efficiency savings, which, by the way, I know I have. And this unit's not that big. It's not like a big boiler like back in the states. Yeah. This thing is maybe 
three feet three feet tall and a foot and a half wide. And it does all your it's hot outside. water on demand. So and when you take outside. a shower, yeah. and it's outside on the back deck. And part of the deal is they come once a year and they check. It costs 59 euro. They, they check the machine to make sure it works good. They come inside to check the heater. The, when you have the water going through the radiators like this, you have to bleed the radiators just yeah. a little bit. But they're virtually maintenance free and i've had this one now i think six years and the other thing is the air conditioner right most units don't come with air conditioner and in my opinion you need an air conditioner well, I, in in at least one room at I, least right. one room and i'll tell you this week is, is paid for itself we i invested in a single air conditioner in for one our room. bedroom okay and it's one of those units that if you put it into the wall. You put it into the wall, and then there's an outside. And then it, you have there's a tube that comes out to the outside. Okay. And then you and the water, the precipitation gets out there, and you have to put a bucket and empty it. Oh well, yeah, right. but, yeah, we put a bucket because we're nice people. We don't want it to leak on anybody. But other people say the hell with it. But uh, it's highly efficient, and actually, I see no increase in my uh, electric bill. No. And the guy told me, he says, you know, when you put on this type of an air conditioner, there's a little jolt of higher energy when it starts. But once it, it's running, it's like, you know, a little bit stronger than a fan. It's and it's not, a great, and you, there's yep. a fan on there and yep, heating. So, so it's, a, it's a great, really one of the best investments. Because remember right. one year what you bought to me, what you bought me when I was... <laughs> <laughs> Darn it, I was going to bring it out to show you guys. He got me this electric fan that's this one. big, and you good plug job. it in, and you're like, oh. <laughs> um, The one good thing about the AC units that I'm talking about is that in the wintertime, you can, they also have a heating function. Yes, I mentioned right? that. Right. And, you know, you could put your, the rest of your house on a low temperature. And just heat your room up. Exactly. And it works great. I'm it's very, you, right, it's, it's very, very yeah, energy very, yeah. efficient for sure. I wish we had, and I think August, they do have them in the States. But August, I, everyone's on vacation, especially the people of the North, because of big, it, that's exactly right. That's exactly what I said, Mizio. Okay. Everyone comes here. Everyone comes here. Um, uh, in Italy, it is used for a lot for air conditioning. It's called conditioner. Conditioner, right. Uh, Kiara says those wall units are so worth it. Uh, We're not a doubt, Kiara. I'm telling you right now. We bought ours at uh, Euronix. The Euronix uh, is like the best buy of Italy. Okay, You walk into this place, it's ginormous, and they have all the different departments from TVs to computers, appliances, computers, phones. phones, and everything. And what they do is they you go there and you pick out the model that you want, Mm -hmm. of air conditioning units, for example. And then they have independent contractors that they will retain to put them into your house for you. So they come, they, they say they're going to be here on Thursday. Usually it's within a week. They say here they're going to be here on Thursday. And sure enough, they're here on Thursday. And they're very professional, and boom, that's about it. Actually, Euronix is one of those stores that for people moving here or <laughs> good, here, yeah. here, here for a long period of time and you need electronics, anything from, you know, equipment for your phone, for your camera, for your computer, for, um, it's a go -to you know, store. A, a, American coffee maker or, or you know, slippers or, or blankets that heat. I mean, that store you can say... I mean, literally everything there, and I mean, and including the micro. I think we got the microwave there as well. Toaster oven, microwave. Toaster. I, I bought everything, a lot of stuff and, there. Literally everything for your home that you may need extra uh, is at Euronix. And Highly uh, recommend. There's another. There's another uh, chain, a national chain that I guess you could say is equivalent to what. Um, uh, what's that big place that has all the wood that they sell? I want to say Costco. I don't know. You know what, in, what, what are you thinking? In the United States where you can go buy wood and hardware. And you mean stuff for the house? Yeah. Home Depot. It's Home like Depot. Home Depot. Okay. Uh, and that's a great store too. And I, matter of fact, tomorrow I have to go because my um, shower, my shower mm -hmm. wire, whatever you call it, hose finally cracked. So I have to put in a new one tomorrow. But they have everything, everything too. for the garden, even garden stuff, even supply, pans, pans, and, and cleaning supplies. Lumber. I mean, there's 
you know, we yeah. we often talk here That's about Brickamine. Brickamine. We often talk here about going to the open market and going shopping here and there, but you know, although we do go to these fruits and vegetable places, the bread place, the fish place, the, the meat place, and supermarkets, we do go to these places to pick up some of our, you know, daily life stuff. So if you're thinking about moving here for an extended period of time, those two stores are Thank you, like Kiara. magic. I mean, they are so useful. But it's a good it's a good topic at least to bring up right now because you know I make a budget every year. I make a budget, and I'm pretty diligent about sticking to the budget okay mm -hmm. i have my cost of feeding us the cost of rent the cost of all the utilities the cost of saving money i save money as if it's a bill okay mm -hmm. i mean i if, if, if a month goes by and i haven't put a few bucks away and maybe a little bit more than a few bucks i'm i'm a little bit aggravated okay but one of the line items i have is home maintenance so i put like a hundred bucks, I put a hundred dollars a month for home maintenance. That's twelve hundred dollars a year. So it's not that I need every euros single, or dollars. No euro. Like well, maybe no dollars. Dollars, okay, okay. a thousand euro. So maybe I'm not going to spend a hundred bucks this month, but maybe next month I'll spend two hundred on something that I, you know, I want to get. And like right now, we have to get our walls painted. Uh, because we had a bad leak, but I'm not supposed to pay for that. Who's supposed to pay for that are the landlord. But I'm just preparing myself that the landlord is got to, you know, fix the fix the uh, roof, and then six months later he's going to try to paint the walls. So I'll probably get somebody to paint the walls myself, because I'm sick and tired of looking at like. You yeah, know, it's been like over seven yeah, months. Yeah, it's been seven seven months. It's been. Um, so that's a very important thing to so have. So listen, we have a lot of um, new people here. It's yeah. nice to see everyone here. Uh, before I forget, don't forget to um, subscribe to this channel, like this video, and share it so other people can uh, be entertained by our useful information. We or have, just if you if you are enjoying it, we would really appreciate it. Wait a second. Let me answer this. I'm going out crazy with all the information regarding the swab. Now I have to take make two swabs to come to Sicily. I don't think so, Mizzy. Why two? Listen to me. The um, the embassies, first of all, check with your um, airlines. Number one, number two, number three, check with your airlines. Secondly, the Italian embassies in the United States have a very clear wording on what the requirement is for Americans coming into Italy. And I posted that on one of our uh, Facebook, the news from Sicily and Italy. But listen to me, Mizzy, I don't know if we're friends on uh, Facebook message me and I'll send you the exact uh, link. So, but we've had people coming here um, from the United States on those COVID free flights and they said the crew and the airport people are super, super helpful because it is so new, because it's such a novelty and everyone is confused. So, uh, message me. Um, hold on one second. What are the co op stores like? There is one right around the corner from where yeah. my apartment will be in Florence. That's a combination of Coop. uh, Coop. Coop's a call, yeah. That's a national chain. And that's a combination store of uh, a very good quality grocery store that has very competitive pricing for stuff. Yeah. We've gone, that's the one yeah. over here in uh, Chiclopi. Yeah. And also. An incredible assortment. Incredible. Very good assortment of stuff. But also. Usually attached to the store is a good good quality hardwares section, uh, homewares section rather, yeah. for the home. And what they do, and they're not so stupid either, by the way, is usually laying next to a coop is an electronics place, either a Euronics or a well, these Tommy are all, or one of these but let, Let's be yeah. clear that what, what we're talking about is a little bit of a mini mall here in yeah. Sicily, yeah, right? They locate right. Them, they, yeah. You know, it's a mini mall. And I know a lot of people are surprised. What? There are malls in Sicily? Yes, there's malls in Sicily. And uh, there's a couple of them by us. And what they have inside are, again, home goods stores, a lot of clothing stores, a lot of bookstores, electronic stores. Um, if you want to get makeup, specialty makeup, there's even hairdressers. So these malls, you know, like American malls, believe it or not, they're big and you can walk from end to end, what, what would you say about 
10 minutes from end to end. They're ginormous. They're not small. Yeah, they're, I they're, mean, they're, they're pretty big. They're usually two floors, too. They're and they're pretty big. With an escalator. And, but the great thing about these malls, too, is that they have always have some kind of a display right in the middle. So, you know, the other day uh, we were there and there they had a uh, ceramic display. During Christmas, they have beautiful Christmas displays. Yeah, but, yeah. And, and also they have some stores that sell typical Sicilian items. So, um, but these malls are great. They're very useful if you want a one place stop to get all your uh, shopping. I know out. people people like when they come to the States on for two week stretch, they always want to bring stuff back. But what happens is they end up doing last minute shopping in whatever tourist destination they happen to land. Mm -hmm. Talmina, for example, or Chefalu, or you know, place like that, where the price is typically a thirty or forty percent more expensive than they are if the people just knew about it five miles away. Okay, so what we do is when we bring people with us, we ask them, do you want us to take you shopping? And we'll take them into a suburban mall if they want. Or, or to we Anna. Take, we can take them into the – they have a ginormous – One of the biggest in Italy. Discount designer malls that has just about everybody We're there. We're talking Dolce Cabana, Gucci, right. all the right. big ones. Right, right. Uh, and it's so, a nice, it, that's a nice outdoor mall. There's restaurants, there's water fountains. So it's not like you're going into an inside mall. I mean, you go from store to store. I mean, there it's, what the heck is the name of it? Uh, Centrale. Where? The, 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 mall, the outdoor mall outside of Etna. No, it's got nothing to do with the word Centrale. Not, what's the name of it? I'm drawing a blank. Okay, but it's not Centrale. I know I that. Said it, I said it's not Centrale. It's I'll mall. tell you what they do have. They even have uh, wait, American stores Do you there. remember? Do you Timberland. Remember? They have a Timberland store. Do you remember? Store? Uh, they have the Nike store there, too. They have too. a Nike store there, too. Why what? am I drawing a blank? Why don't you just get the, get the thing because and just I'm, use I'm the other good. one. I use can. the other. Go ahead. You can. All right. Okay, you can read these. Okay, I'll, I'll read them. You look up what the name of it is. Why but anyways, am I drawing a they have American places, as I was saying. They have, uh, and she'll give you the name in just a second. Uh, they have Timberlane, and they used to have Triple XL. And by the way, let me tell you a quick story before I continue on. It's almost impossible for a man my size. I'm <laughs> six feet two, 245 pounds. It's almost impossible for a guy my size to buy underwear in Sicily. It's 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 a it's disgraceful. Okay, you can't find them. Literally. Outlet, outlet, mall. Sicily Outlet Village. Yeah, Sicily Outlet. It's a must see. So if you like finish. shopping, if you like shopping, seriously, Sicily Outlet. girls, there boys, this is so. A great anyways, one. on Monday, when we went to the outdoor market, this guy was selling all sorts of men's stuff. So I said to him, <laughs> in Italian, I said, "Do you have any underwear?" Which is Mudundis. Do you have any? He says, "What size?" And I said, XXXL, figuring everything is down two sizes. Already. So <laughs> the guy rumbled and he found three pairs of men's boxer shorts, XXXL, three XL. Well, tell the story what happens the last time you got those. The last time I, well, I had to go there. I went, the last time I went <laughs> so there and I bought some, I couldn't even get them me. over my knees. They fit me. They fit They me. fit her, right? <laughs> because they were all wrapped up, you know, and so this time I asked, I asked, said to the guy, "Can I open them up?" And I opened them up, and I said, I said to myself, "Geez, they these look might good on you. These might fit, right?" So I said, "How much are they?" He said, "They're four euro each." He had three of them. I says, "Will you take ten bucks, ten euro for the three of them?" He says, "You are take them, okay?" Then I looked. The same guy, he had on. What are those kind of? You know the socks, the ankle socks for men yeah. instead of like the long and ones. And they say Italia. They say Italian more. A set of three. I said, how much do they cost? He said, well, there's, there's three of them now. Three of them, right? He says, uh, one euro and 50 cents. So that's 50 cents a pair of, of socks, which, by the way, when I go home, I'm usually paying 13 bucks for three. So I have to tell you guys. I was so happy. This, I a whole place, bunch of stuff. this place, we go here, Achi San Antonio. It's an open market. Uh, Esther has been there with us, and they have fruit and vegetables. Uh, they literally have everything for your kitchen. They have clothes. They have uh, material if you want to go, if you want to sew, um, electronics, Beautiful hair stuff, stuff yeah. all discounted. 
And uh, walking through, it's so much fun. There's always something new. I was really surprised. The prices this year are very, very low. I bought a pair of but I made out, for five me, bucks. But I, yeah, but that was that was a cheap plastic one. Really? But I made out great with some uh, lipstick and some um, nail polish. Uh, they had a hair straightener there that was pretty cheap. That's a great. And we're going to take our group there because we take some people there and they make out great as well. You Thank you, what? Esther. Hold on. Thank you, Esther Shapalou. Thank you. I just had a little bit of a brain fart. Let me answer this. My son wants to know what fast foods you have. It. Unfortunately, the street foods are the best, but they do have McDonald's. Yeah, they do have McDonald's. They have McDonald's. They do have they McDonald's. Have, there's about 10 McDonald's, I believe, in Sicily now. They have, uh, as a chain, they had, they had Subways. I don't think they went over very well. They also had Burger King. But that, that, that closed that's, up that's too. Close. McDonald's. But the McDonald's here Starbucks, in Sicily. They have Starbucks. In Sicily? In Rome. In, we're talking One Sicily. of the largest ones in Europe but is in Rome. I have to tell you that the McDonald's here is not like the McDonald's you're used to in the United States. You go in, it's very nice. The um, hamburgers are, they, they're pretty good, right? The, the wait hamburgers a second. are three times better than the ones in the in the States. And you can also get a croissant. You can also get a gelato. You can also get all types Wine, of other Italian or Sicilian goodies. Yep. So the McDonald's here, it, it's just like everything. The food here is so good. And I would say even the fast food. But even, you know what we love to do is stop at the auto grill. So when you're driving along the highway, there's some certain stops. The auto grill has great food. You can sit there and have a really nice lunch, three courses, or one course, or the paninis are through the roof, delicious. And then also on the counter, they have croissants, they have um, arancini, all types of uh, great stuff. But Deborah, let me tell you that for your son, the street vendors, I mean, they do the food pretty fast there, and it is it is absolutely fantastic. Does your son like pizza? He'll be in heaven. Exactly. The pizzerias here are just, they're just unbelievable. And also the shawarma sandwiches, you know the sandwiches where they they get the they get the thing and they cut the, they cut. Yeah, you know, those are pretty good. Those are dynamite. But but you, you uh, go to these festivals and you got the sauce dynamite. sandwich you, you and you the all about types food, food all day over here. Man. Uh, Paul Crazy. says I almost chose the language school in Tarmina. That's, That's Babylonia. Babylonia. That's Babylonia. our good those friend. Friends, yeah. Actually, Paul, we did an entire episode called um, Sicily's First Settlers, um, and we talked to. Um, oh no, that would not settle. It's Sicily's first settlers. Who did we talk to? Um, the next generation of Sicilian. We talked to the president of Babylon, and he was so powerful in, ta in talking Adorno. about dispelling the myths and the stereotypes of Sicily. So I'm going to put a link. I think they're just getting back. Well. I think they were closed, but I think they're just getting back up operational. It's, it's probably the well, Harvard. Everyone. That's the Harvard of language schools uh, south of Rome, Babylonia. Matter of fact, the Sicilian Project, you know, we have that uh, nonprofit, right? The Sicilian Project, we use them for the first seven, six or seven, five, five years, I'd say, to uh, teach kids. Okay, we, they were running classes for us. Babylonian Language School was running classes for us. Yeah. In all the surrounding areas up there in the province of Messina, they did a great job. Yeah, I don't, yeah. And by the way, I want to thank, I want to thank 19 people, okay? Because on my Facebook, Ciao, Francesco, Francesco, how are you? Ben <laughs> Apostol, Francesco, huh? Melio, huh? Um, Is that friend Francesco? Our neighbor, Francesco. On, on Wait, Facebook. Should, should on we say hi? Go ahead, go say, go say hi. Espetta, hey, Francesco. Can you see him? <laughs> so look at, there he is. And there's our clothes drying. Can you see our clothes? Ciao, Francesco. <laughs> Oh, yeah, we don't have a dryer, by the way, you guys. That's another uh, kind of important thing to discuss, right? I mean, no no dryers. A lot of people don't When it's have. 99 degrees, my clothes dry on that rack over there in one hour. And by the yeah. way, the rack cost me 10 bucks five years ago, okay? I don't have a dryer here. We don't need no, one. No, I don't want a dryer, okay? Yeah. We, have, we have a small little washing machine for the two of us. It's not one of those things with an agitator. It's the one that goes around like this. And it's small. It's it cleans, small. cleans them. The thing costs us no, no more than 300 bucks. And it works great. The thing works great. The refrigerator that I have, which is a top-rated one, 
cost me less than 400 bucks. I mean, the economies of scale, because things are smaller here, they really kick in and you save a ton of money <laughs> on that type of stuff. The only thing I would say is even at F hotels, if you use the um, washing machine, just make sure you ask someone uh, about the settings because there's one setting that will do the wash for about an hour and a half yeah, that's until you, because you have to see rapido, rapido. Yeah, you want to you do, rapido, to do rapido. Rapido. Minutes. We've had so many people at the hotels and they don't know which button to press and it goes forever. Christine, I remember this, the cute furless purse and a great lunch at the out. I want to finish my story, okay, before Francesca. Okay. I want to thank the 19 people who donated to my birthday fundraiser for the Sicilian Project. Which today hit a thousand euro. Jody DeLuca, Jim. Jody, yep. A lot a of people th here. Vivian, a thousand euro. That's twelve hundred dollars, United States dollars, on a Facebook thing. And that money that these people donated, it's all tax deductible because we're a five hundred one c three. And I'm conversing. It takes about sixty days or so for that money to actually get to the people. And Facebook doesn't take any money out, by the way, for that because it's a nonprofit. And that money is going to be going to our two charities that we've been trying to raise money for in Achille Alley. So we were targeted for that. I want to thank you people yeah. so much. And all the other people that. who have donated to the great cause. There's been so many wonderful The generosity stories. of a the lot people, of people who have been, have been tremendous. Stepping up to the plate. Mizio Shocked. says, I, yes, I know this information, but the airlines ask for a before you leave and the second when you arrive. Yeah, you do have to take one when you arrive. I leave with the COVID tested flight program. Um, Maria says, I love how excited you get over good tea. It's so much fun. I have to tell you, going to the market, both of us, Alfred and I, both walk with these bags and we're like, I can't believe we just spent 20 euro on all of this. <laughs> <laughs> like I got some uh, shirts and and a, with some shorts and you know they're just running around shorts and they are so cute. I would be paying at least five times as much. I go to I go to Whole Foods in the state. I swear to God, one bag's fifty bucks. One bag, and I don't even know what the hell is in there. By the way, Maria, listen, this is important. When you come, okay, you need to bring some Aquanet for Esther Will you stop because it? the hair the Look hair stuff. She complains all the time that it doesn't do anything. That's not true. I bought the wrong thing. You know, Weston, not I for nothing. I use thing. it for my hair, too. What would happen to me? I went bald. Um, <laughs> Al, I read the about the underwear XSL boxers issue on your book, The Reverse It. Funny Tony, story. that was a true story. Well, we just happened to us last week, Al. No, but that one, that, but, that, and what, that was a nightmare, Tony. That was a nightmare. Believe me when I tell you. I went in, and the name of the store was called Scaringi. Oh. They finally bailed me out. Joya says, if I decided to get a furnished apartment, how Not much Not to get a furnished apartment. Right. How much would it cost to furnish? When did you furnish this? You wait, wait, wait. When did you furnish I can this? answer that question. But when did you Less furnish? Less than $2,000. But when season. did you furnish I, I this furnished kitchen? It, it must have been ago, at least middle. seven years ago or eight years ago because I've been eight, eight They years, have so specialty. She's asking about the kitchen. She's looking right. for a gas stove, a refrigerator, a sink, cupboards. That's what they're... Those, they're all units. And I just picked up two two years ago for the apartments downstairs when I was helping my friend there. They were eighteen hundred euro each, and they're beautiful. Dishwasher, refrigerator, gas stove, yeah. sink, and the unit up top to put your uh, glasses in. So Joe Asioni and, and uh, Susan stayed there. They loved it. It was beautiful. They yeah. come over. They put them right in. Boom. Uh, this is good. Since I'm moving and selling almost everything I own here, I'm debating on bringing my cookware. I have read if you have really good cookware to bring them, what do you think? The cookware here is excellent. I'm sorry. Like our pans that we have here, they have everything here, Jody. Now they have everything. What even, I mean, what the one thing that you miss is a crock pot, right? Well, we I have a crock pot. Well, we got that for, from our friends at the military base. Well, I don't I mean, know what but, kind of, I don't but know. Jody says she Jody, has good stuff. I mean, Jody, a cast my iron friend, pan. Those my friend Vanessa, a, you know, the owners of the resin, her kitchen is fully equipped with the highest rated, high all types. She has a bread maker. She's got a juicer. She's got everything. 
everything. So that's my opinion on that. But we can discuss uh, specifically what are you thinking that maybe there's something that you would really miss, perhaps. But I would say the Jordy, you're a vet, is, right? If you're a veteran, she's a veteran. That's a good you point. Can, the best thing is for you to bring your. If your, there's something, can I finish my sentence? Yes. Thank you, <laughs> Jody. Okay. What you can do is you can go to the base commissary as a veteran at SIG, and you can buy stuff. And the best part about it is you pay in U.S. dollars, including all American stuff, like stuff that you like. That's yeah, what I was foods say. and stuff. That's a good point. Um, listen, Jody, uh, message me privately if there's something specifically that you want. I have been surprised at how many things are more readily available here in Sicily in the past few years, including American products that you can buy in the supermarket. I mean, just I mean, there's now all the salsa and taco and and Doritos and and you know not that you guys want to have that stuff when you come here but just so you know there are more things readily available my kids love the auto grill much better than what they call food at the restaurant that's future. correct I, you know what? let me just read a couple of I saw the episodes a few weeks ago. After my year uh, study visa, I hope to remain in Italy forever. Eventually, I would like to move closer somewhere in South or in Sicily. I vote for Sicily. Oh. Let me just read. A, there's a few other things. Um, okay, Anthony says, I'm really thinking of moving there. Take a shot. Only have one life. Go for it. I agree. I agree. The only thing you really need a dryer for are your towels when you hang your towels out the dry they are crunchy and hard i don't mind them do you actually if you talk to a doctor a good towel is crunchy on one side and soft on the other when you come out of the shower the crunchy side is supposed to stimulate the, the skin and to take off the dead skin and then you flip the towel around and the that's what you're supposed to do it. So yeah, a good, the, that's a European towels. towels, Alfred. Those are European towels. Yeah. Even in Hungary, you have those two-sided towels. They're, they're expensive. Um, towels are expensive here. They're not. Sorry, cheap. guys. I'm having a horrible time with the ticket company. Had to take. Oh, okay. Talk oh, to you later. Yeah. Okay. Wait, there was something I. Oh, Jimmy says yes. He. I also want to donate to the Olive Tree Memorial. That, that's something else we have, you guys, is the Olive Tree Memorial, where we plant um, olive trees in certain groves around Sicily in memorial for someone or as a birthday gift, a wedding gift, or some kind of a gift. And it's a beautiful way to plant seeds here in Sicily, help um, a farmer, a local farmer, a local olive. And when you come here to Sicily, guess what? You get to visit your own tree. So I love that. You want to say something? Yeah. Okay. Uh, for you new folks, we have a thing here that you can become a subscriber on our private channel for it's one dollar and ninety nine cents a month, basically a cup of coffee, and that money is to kind of support our program. There's a button up there that says join. We've had a ton of people join already. We do she posts she posts private things up. So if you think about it, if you enjoy what we do, uh, please consider joining. And the other thing I wanted to say, and this month I sold 20 books of The Reverse Immigrant. That's my first book that's been out of uh, print, right? So I put it up on Kindle as one of those books that you print on demand. You order it through Kindle. So The Reverse Immigrant, for those of you who do not have it, is available at Kindle or at my website, alfredzappler.com. And people are really happy that they now have the four books to Set. Um, listen, Maria. So it's I don't really use hairspray. <laughs> it's for days like this when we're on a shoot. And look at this. I can't. I put a little bit of hairspray, but it's so uh, windy that it's not keeping down. Um, Paul says he's sixty-two, pushing to sixty. Ha ha. Paul, I'm telling you right now, you better bring clothes, underwear. Thank. You. Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Underwear, you're not going to find here. If you're looking for sweaters. And you like to look like a sausage. The double XL sweaters here are really like men's watch. Yeah. The only store that sells regular size XXL in the big cities is Timberland. And they're very good quality too. But you could buy I gotta ask States. the brothers where they get their clothes. Because they're the brothers. They're skinny they're, though. They're not no, they're bigger than no, they're yeah, they're big. They're not like that. Uh, Jody says my wonderful family and friends donated to the Sicilian project for my family. Yes, too. they did. She I broke mentioned, her record too, Jody. I love you. 
Jim Esther looks awesome. Al, I'll bring you some underwear. Wait a <laughs> Jim, I love how it. do I look? Okay. Okay. Mizio, make sure you uh, message me. Uh, Andrew, Andrew, nice to see you. Well, Hello tomorrow. from Giardino Noxo. So I would like to invite you guys tomorrow for dinner. Andrew, Andrew, send me an email or uh, you, me, and Sicily on Facebook. We are there as well. We love Giardini Knox because we go there all the time. Do you know Sicilia's? Roberto is the owner. We love that restaurant. So message me. Nice to see some more Sicilians on here. That's great. That's Let great. everyone know about the Sicilian project on Amazon as well. Oh, yeah. I don't even spot. make a purchase unless it's part of my. Thank you. That's Amazon Good Smile. Point. Amazon Good Smile. Good point. Right. Thank, Thank you. you very What's much. Mama Sicily? Um, Vivian is here. She's a little bit late, but that's okay. Good to see you. Sean Sean's is here, here too. too. Listen, Sean and Viv, when we wrap up, make sure you scroll to the beginning of this video because we had a lot of good uh, information there. So um, let me see. Alfred, what does your hat say? Well, hello, Boston. No, your hat. Your hat. Your hat, honey. Zero. Your hat. Is that your hat? My painting hat. Boston. 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 I am very proud that I'm a Bostonian because people forever make fun of my uh, accent. But I want to remind you folks, need I say the Boston Patriots, the New England Patriots, or do I have to say the Red Sox? No more. No more. <laughs> On that note, if you're coming in late, uh, make sure you watch the beginning. Hit Thank the you. like button. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. And we'll be back with another chat on Sunday. And another video is coming also to you soon. Thank you so much for watching. It's been a pleasure bringing you Sicily. She's a dog. She is oh. a dog.